afternoon and welcome back here in studio in our beautiful studios in downtown Rochester. And we're talking sports with Val. How are you doing, Val? Well, I was thinking about Indianapolis Chittard and their football team. They're 0-4 and, and they're ranked number 9 in Class 4A. And I was like, how is that possible? And I looked who they played. They played Warren Central, number 7 in Class 6A. They played Cathedral, number 1 in Class 5A. They have played uh, Ron Colley, number one in Class 4A, and they have played Brebuff, number one in Class 3A, and those are their four losses. Yeah, and they're still so they're still ranked number ten, and three of the four losses have been by a touchdown. So, if you think you've had a tough schedule, you are not going to get any sympathy from the folks down at Chittard. <laughs> well, talking about tough schedules, uh, we've had a, uh, a rough go of it this week as far as. Changes, yeah, uh, kind of the the theme yeah. of the week, and I was thinking about the old Yogi Berra saying, "It ain't over till it's over." This is the exact opposite. It ain't happening until you actually see it happening. Right, and you know the week started off with uh, one cancellation right out of the gate. Winnemac was supposed to play at North Judson, that one got canceled. Gosh, right out of the gate, didn't it? Was it Monday when that one was? Uh, uh, no, it wasn't until Wednesday. Uh, was it that late? Yeah, yeah, until Wednesday morning. Okay. And then, of course, uh, later Wednesday, we got the uh, the news that nobody wanted to hear, and that is the cancellation of the Bell game. And you know, it's not just the football game part of it that's disappointing mm -hmm. that that was canceled because there was so much more to that game. You know, that, that was kind of going to be the coming out as far as you know, expecting almost to sell out. You know, full stands. We had uh, Coach Hughes' benefit going on that right. night as well tonight. And that's was... been postponed to October 1st before the Northfield game. Yes, mm -hmm. I heard they were going to try and do that. So, you know, that's great that they can still do that. But, uh, yeah, no Bell game. That's uh, – and I guess, you know, for Valley fans, it was okay. You know, you wanted to play Rochester, but uh, they still have a game Mm -hmm. At least as of right now. Yeah. Uh, that could change. But uh, they will be going to North Judson, who was supposed to play Winnemac. And Judson uh, had a home game scheduled. Valley had a road game scheduled. Hey. so Right. They probably had a deficiency crew hired and all ready to go. So Yeah. yeah. It's, it's homecoming night for North Judson. So they wanted to make sure and still be able to do that. And, you know, the, the I guess good thing, neat thing about, you know, these cancellations is you get to see something like this because I'm thinking, have they ever played before in football? I haven't seen any evidence that they have. I'd, yeah. I'll, I'll just do a little more digging. What I do know is that Rochester and Valley have played every year since 1978, mm -hmm. and that's not happening. Yeah. Winnemac and, Winnemac's had a varsity football team since 1970. They have played North Judson at least once every year. They could still meet this year's sectional, but sure. still, this is, <laughs> talk about... You can shocking news. Mm -hmm. I mean that these two games would would both be gone, but yeah, the Valley in, Valley won't play Rochester this year. There's no chance of them meeting. In there's this no chance of yeah. And I mean they played every year since 1978. Every year for the Bell since 1987. Yeah. So unfortunately, and and you know we were thinking the game might be a really good game this year. You know Rochester coming in off mm -hmm. of uh, you know three straight. Valley, of course, you know, 4 0 yeah. coming in. Valley's been so dominant. Not only are they 4 0, but they won every game by at least 31 points. Certainly, Valley would be the favorite. I mean, they won, they beat Rochester 54 to nothing last year. I don't think you gained 54 points in one year, but it certainly would have been an interesting matchup to see how Rochester would have been able to try and move the ball against Valley. Mm -hmm. And, you know, would Alex Deming continue to have the type of success against the Valley defense coming off a shutout against Manchester last week? That he's had against all the other teams. Alex leads the state in rushing by all accounts. I don't. We don't know every single running back in the state. We don't know what they put on online, or but we believe Alex leads the state. I haven't looked. Uh, 1,031 yards rushing. I think I might have overestimated Alex's total, but I'm pretty confident that 1,031 yards is his total, and I think he's also got 13 touchdowns in four games, which is also. That's a incredible. that's a really good season. Yeah, that's a really good season. Not not to mention just playing four games. Yeah. So would he have been able to have that type of success against Valley? And again, I think Valley would have been favored, but boy, the Rochester confidence was, you know, they were just playing so much more confident week by week. And, uh, you know, last week against Wabash, they were really, you know, they really, I think, uh, I think fatigue was a factor late, and I think their conditioning was superior to Wabash's conditioning, and that's why they were able to pull away and win that game pretty handily late. Yeah. 
And I guess I'm wondering, as you look down to next week with the uh, Zebras supposed to go down to Peru, with this happening so late in the week, is that going to be canceled? It has been canceled. Right. Rochester will not be playing Peru next week. So Rochester's next game is October 1st at home against Northfield. Okay, so that's already sun. Okay. Yeah. So they're out for two. Yeah. It's, again, this is just so much to deal with. But, mm -hmm. yeah, that game is not happening either. Yeah. So Peru is looking for a game for next week. Yeah. Well, I wonder what Judson's doing next week. Yeah. They, they seem to be the one that kind of picks up those games. But, yeah, yeah we've we've had, you know, our fair share of, of this across our teams. You know, Culver missed two weeks. They were back last week. Let's talk a little bit about the Cavaliers because they uh, they came back last week, went on the road, and, and won at West Central. And uh, they're going to be coming home this week for their homecoming, and that's a big game against Triton. I was talking with Coach Mike Zaner on the phone the other day, and he really liked his the balance of his team offensively. Uh, they had nobody had 100 yards rushing. I mean, they had three different guys who had at least 70. You know, I think Mike Thompson had 99 yards rushing. Shane Schumann had 92, and I think Emiliano Ortiz had around 70, at 70 or 71. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, Coach Zayner said uh, Culver beat West Central by the way, 38 to 14. It was 30 to nothing at halftime, mm -hmm. so he was a little disappointed with how the second half went. But still, uh, you know, Coach Zayner was saying, like, man. West Central, they, they had their whole defense stacked up to stop Schumann. And so we just gave the ball to other guys and had them, you know, gain the yards because we still feel that Shane's going to break one no matter how hard you try and stop him. Mm -hmm. And he had, he did have a few big big carries. And then on top of that, Tucker Fisher completed two passses, both of them for touchdowns. Wow. A 41-yarder to Marquez Anderson and a 24-yarder to Ethan Keller. Yeah. So each tight end caught a touchdown pass. So that's, that's the balance that Coach Zayner has been kind of seeking and that he thought he could get with this year's group. I know he was talking about passing this year, and I was kind of laughing at him like, come on. Yeah. But, yeah. In fact, he said that Tucker Fisher has the best arm of any quarterback he's coached. Really? Which is saying something because, you know, John Hunting right. was a really good quarterback for him. But, right. uh, yeah. Well, two, two uh, pass completions for Culver. You know, we talked about Deming. You know, that's a, a year's worth. Uh, that's kind of a year's worth for Culver, two pass completions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and for touchdowns, too. So, yeah. you know, again, uh, he, he, I think he wants to, wants the intensity to keep up for, for four whole quarters. Because, again, mm -hmm. the, they were – but, again, it's – again, they're up 30 to nothing at halftime against West Central. How do you, how do you keep up the intensity? You know, we'll see. But, yeah, a, a very interesting game against Triton this week. Um you know, Triton's coming up a 35-7 to loss to Bremen last week. They've got uh, Anthony Shu. He's only a sophomore. He is a big, strong running back. Um, for, from what everybody... I've not seen Triton play in person, but from what everybody said, their offense looks a lot like Rochester's. Mm -hmm. That wing tee. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to get... And they use their fullback a lot. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the quarterback, Cole Sh uh, Shively, he's only a... You know, Shu's only a sophomore, and their quarterback, Shively's only a sophomore, too. It's a pretty young Triton team, but mm -hmm. pretty talented, pretty athletic. Yeah. That'll be uh, yeah, that'll be an interesting game. I'll be up there. Uh, you know, that, my plans got changed too, so yeah. I'll be up there helping those guys out. Yeah, it, it's a physical, physical Triton defense too. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they're pretty big for a one A team, and so it's going to be an interesting battle on the line of scrimmage with, you know, when you talk about uh, Evans and the two Zaners mm -hmm. up front against the Triton defensive line. Mm -hmm. Some big boys there. Yeah, and you know, it's going to be a, a front line battle. Yeah. That's with Culver, you know how that that goes. You know they're they're going to try and win in the trenches. Yeah, but the good news is that you know Culver came back from a two week pause and really, you know they played pretty good defense against North Judson in their opener and they kept up that good defense against West Central for the most part. I know the mm -hmm. Hebrew kid from West Central, their young quarterback, got loose for a couple of big plays in the second half. So mm -hmm. we'll see if they, we'll see if the Culver defense can pick it up because again we've been saying that the defense for Culver is going to be kind of decide how far they go this year. Yeah. Uh, down at Caston last week, the Pioneer Panthers coming off of their first win of the season against LaVille. They go over to Caston, another big conference matchup for them, obviously. And uh, i I, I got to say I was a little surprised at, at how many points that uh, Pioneer was able to put up. They've, I think, found a formula with that you know kind of wildcat-type offense with Robinson playing that wildcat quarterback kind of. Similar to what Jack mm -hmm. Kaiser did, and also Ezra Llewellyn there in 2019, so yeah. seem to have found an offensive formula. They've they've had the defensive formula down. 
It's the offense that was struggling. And boy, was Pioneer ready to go that first play from scrimmage, 64-yard touchdown pass from Robinson to Caleb Sweet. It was like, wait, who is that number 40? Caleb usually wears number 58, but to play a receiver, it changes uniform number. Uh -huh. And boy, that was a, just a beautiful touch pass by Robinson. He just floated it right in there. The casting guy looked like he had a chance to make the tackle. He missed, and Caleb was gone. And all of a sudden, it's seven to nothing. Ten seconds into the game, and I think that was just a blow. That it, it just kind of that, that momentum just kind of continued the rest of the game for for a pioneer offense that's been kind of scuffling a little bit this year. And they wound up putting forty two points on the board, three hundred twenty two yards passing and three touchdowns for Robinson. Yeah. Plus he had another eighty five yards rushing on top of that. And now you've seen Caden Hill involved at the running back spot. Yeah, he had uh, I think uh, he had a good game on the ground. He had a nineteen yard reception. You know. Uh, Sweet had one of you catching two touchdown passes. Talosis, I mean, now you've got all these guys contributing on offense. When at the start of the season it was going to be, who's going to contribute on offense? Mm -hmm. and now you've got they're developing these weapons as the season has progressed. And he did say pass. Mm -hmm. You know, that's yeah. almost as rare as a, a Culver touchdown pass. I mean, it's kind of the the anomaly weekend for right. people throwing and especially passes. Especially for Robinson, who's we we've not known as a quarterback or can. You know, yeah. can he throw the ball? I mean, yeah. and read defenses and, and pick apart a defense. But, boy, they, they were definitely well prepared. Yeah. You could tell. Yeah. So the Comets uh, back yeah. home again tonight. They have LaVille. So, you know, that's going to be another tough matchup for them. And then uh, Pioneer back home against uh, Hammond. Uh, so their first home game in, since week one, uh, taking on a 5A Hammond team. But, you know, this is kind of a, a new set up with Hammond because they, you know, combined some schools up there. So they, you know, they're not the greatest 5A football yeah. team that you're going to face, but it's still 5A, I mean. Yeah, for those people unfamiliar with Hammond Central, it's a consolidation between Hammond High, Hammond Gavin, and Hammond Clark. Now in a one school, it's about 1,900 students. It's a 5A school. But again, it's a new school. These kids, I mean, a lot of these Hammond kids, they... They're not teammates with kids they used to be big rivals with. Right. And so it's kind of a unique experience for right. them. Uh, they, you know, they're coming off a 61-34 to 34 loss to Highland last week, so they've really been having trouble stopping people. Having said that, uh, the quarterback for Hammond Central is a really good athlete. I think he had about 250 yards passing against Highland, and he's also very fast. And he can get outside the pocket and do some damage with his legs as well. So he is going to have to be the focal point of this pioneer defense. You know, It's going to be a completely different type of defensive game plan. Last week against Caston, they had to stop the option. Now they're going to have to stop a quarterback who's, you know, a real playmaker and a real fast guy. Uh, you know, one one guy that even Coach Porter from Caston really complimented was Derek Legrand. He has been playing great football at that end spot. Mm -hmm. And the other guy that uh, Coach I talked with Adam Berry early in this week, and he talked a lot about Oscar Solano mm -hmm. at that nose at that nose tackle. I, th I don't think Oscar's played a lot of nose before right. defensively, but he caused havoc last week against Caston. Let's see if he can do the same thing against Hammond Central. They play in a little 3-4 type defense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So Oscar's been playing very well. And, I mean, they, you know, uh, Sam Smith got loose for a touchdown in the fourth quarter, but by then it was 42 to nothing. The Pioneer defense is playing great football these last two games against LaVille and Caston. Yeah, and it's not really been an issue all year uh, defensively. It was it was their offense that was struggling getting going. Right. I was always wondering, you know, Pioneer plays that, that uh, the defensive line does that slanting Thing, which is kind of unique. Mm -hmm. uh, not a lot of teams, a few teams do it, not a lot. So would you know, the defensive line be able to adapt to that, these new guys, but it seems like they're doing a great job with it. Mm -hmm. As for Kasten, um, you know, Plummer, Lucas Plummer, the quarterback from LaVille, only a sophomore, very athletic, gets outside the pocket, uh, can make plays with his feet, uh, can make plays with his legs. But how many weapons do they have besides him? Mm -hmm. I mean, Kasten's obviously going to focus their defense on Plummer just like Pioneer has to do with the Hammond Central quarterback. So that's going to be kind of the interesting matchup. Again, LaVille, who knows what to expect, didn't play last week. Right. They've had COVID issues. And their, uh, you know, their offense has not been very and, dynamic. And when they, yeah, mm -hmm. you're right. Um, I think they, yeah, LaVille's averaging nine points a game and allowing eight. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's what you get with LaVille. A lot of low-scoring games. But yeah. LaVille plays great defense. They battled Triton to a 0-0 zero, zero tie before winning in overtime. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so... Not uh, not a whole lot. I think they scored what seven against Pioneer, so yeah. Well, that uh, that'll be interesting. Of course, uh, Winnemac not going to be playing this week. Uh, they were supposed to play North Judson. Their new opponent, we said, was uh, Tippecanoe Valley. Tippecanoe Valley, obviously, what we talked about coming off of another big win. Uh, they 
defeated Manchester at home. Yeah, beat, so, him thir- beat him 36 to nothing. I was not expecting a shutout. Right. It's a good Manchester team. They've got a couple really nice backs. Right. And they, they shut them out. They held the Ream kid to less than three yards of carry. Yeah. That's the same Ream who had over 300 yards rushing in a game against Rochester last year. He is he's a big play waiting to happen, and Valley hemmed him in all night. Mm-hmm. Um, Seth Gurdy, the big wide, great wide receiver for Manchester, he had a big game. Eight catches for 92 yards, but they kept him out of the end zone. But Stroud, their other big receiver, held him to two catches for 11 yards. He didn't do much damage. But this Valley defense is playing very, very well right now. Even with the even and they're, and they're banged up and they're still playing well. And you look at that secondary; it's going to be one of the best secondaries in the area. When you talk about Rex Kirkenstein at one corner, Braden Shepard at the other corner, and the two safeties, Hunter Ehrenman and Wade Jones. Wow, are they good? Wade, four games, four interceptions, and he returned. It was a pick six last week against Manchester. He is playing great football. We talk about great. Talk about great players in this area. How many great sophomores do we have? It's yeah. amazing when you talk about. I mean, obviously going back to Rochester with Deming and Favreda and those guys. Wade Jones is only a sophomore. Right. Dalton Albert is only a sophomore for for Valley. Right. I mean, these kids are young. Yeah, he did such a great job last year, and it's kind of you forget that this is only his second year of yeah. playing high school. And, right. Uh, you know, you, you throw that defense in yeah. with the with the high powered offense that they have, and man, they've just been rolling. Yeah, and you know, Kate. Caden Hill from Pioneers, a sophomore. Chase Engott from Caston's, a sophomore. And a lot of good young players yeah. in our area. Yeah. So Valley on the road. Jane, and Jones, from, Jane Jones from Winnipeg, another sophomore, is playing well. Yeah. yeah. Um, see, we have, uh, we talked about Culver, Pioneer. So, um, yeah, that about covers anybody we missed. Yeah, just, you know, I talked with John Hendricks on Wednesday. He was just very, very frustrated with the way things are going. This is the third week in a row where COVID has, prop, has cropped up either with their them or their opponent. Mm-hmm. And it's just, you know, how do you prepare for an opponent? I mean, when you don't know you're going to play or not, I can see why a coach would be especially frustrated. But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they, they, had, they had a practice on Tuesday and then got a call on Wednesday saying that you've had a couple positive tests and your whole team has to be quarantined. Yeah, and and what was really frustrating is he's just about to get some JV kids who had been quarantined back on Friday, mm-hmm. and it's you know especially for Winnemac mm-hmm. because you know we saw what happened that year that the the softball you know got canceled completely. Mm-hmm. Their softball team was poised to to really be something special that year, and yeah. their football team is is you know wanting to play because this is their year. This is twenty seniors on in yeah. the lineup. And they've been waiting for this. They've, you know, they they were hoping to run through conference play undefeated and, and you know make a huge statement when it comes to playoff time. And and right now it's been fast start and then phew, hit the brakes. Yeah. And you know it's it is sad. Hopefully you know we can get kind of get settled in and, and maybe uh, get through this here soon. But it doesn't look like it's going to happen anytime in the near future. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, so Rochester out for at least two weeks. Uh, Valley's going to be at Judson this week. No Winnemac Warriors. Caston hosting LaVille. Culver hosting Triton. And Pioneer hosting Hammond Central. So that that are uh, our yeah. lineup. Yeah, it's interesting when you look at the uh, some of the computer rankings right now. Thinks pretty highly of Pioneer, even though they're only 2-2. Two and two. Mm-hmm. And thinks pretty highly of Valley as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's interesting, you know, Mishawaka Marion's coming off a big win over New Prairie, and with Valley, you know, they're kind of always in that, uh, you know, kind of, you're looking down the road. I I know we in the media can look down the road. Mm-hmm. Valley, you know, as a coach, I was saying, take it one game at a time, but we can look down the road because Mishawaka Marion's just dominated that sectional for, what, five, six years now. And, yeah. you know, they beat New Prairie, they beat a good New Prairie team 33 to nothing last week. It should be interesting to see if Valley runs into Mishawaka Marion. Yeah. Or Jimtown at some point in the right. in the postseason because both of those teams are playing great defense right now. Yeah, and could they stop the Valley? Can they stop Valley? Can they stop Valley, who's just on a roll offensively? I mean, Branson Breyer three incompletions his last two games. I know we're kind of bouncing around, but mm-hmm. three incompletions, seven for nine for one hundred and eighty yards. That is a that is efficient passing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is. Well, we'll see how that goes. You know, that yeah. should be a should be a fun matchup up yeah, at Judson. Yeah, against a good Judson defense. That's going to be a very interesting game. Yeah. Uh, you know, Judson, offensively, can they put up any numbers against Valley's defense? That's going to be the, the question. Right, they got a young quarterback in Aldrich Harper. Uh, he was another guy. He had two pass completions last week, but both went for touchdowns, and mm-hmm. they beat Knox 21-14 to mm-hmm. in a really uh, exciting game. Two, two long pass plays, so... 
We'll see if uh, North Jetson can get some balance going offensively. But again, that Valley secondary is tough. Yeah, they got an opportunity to, to look at some film, too, because uh, didn't Valley play Knox in the scrimmage? They did. Yes, so they, they got a little, uh, at least, mm -hmm. you know, perspective on, on some film, even though they have, like, 24 hours to look at it. Yeah. Hopefully they can get some. Mm -hmm. Maybe Knox will play nice and share with, with Judson. But North Judson was on TV last week. Their game was televised to a wide audience. Right, so that would be good for uh, for Valley. Yeah. So they can take a look at that mm -hmm. and, and compare that to mm -hmm. the to the Knox game. So mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Mm -hmm. That's that's you know one of those last minute kind of things, and we'll we'll see how that goes. And uh, you know, it uh, interesting matchup for sure. Mm -hmm. Any other football you want to share? Yeah, I just want to say the Ken Hughes dinner postponed to October first uh, uh, before the Northfield before the Northfield game. I think. It, some of the logistics are trying to be worked out, but it's going to be October first, so yeah. that's really important to, because that, that was the first, that was one of the first things I thought of when the Bell game was canceled. I mean, mm -hmm. with Coach Hughes and yeah, how can how can people help him out? Yeah, so we'll keep tuned for that, but uh, that should be uh, before the Northfield game on the first. So we're going to take a break, and we'll come back. We'll talk some uh, soccer, some volleyball, and tennis and golf as we continue talking sports with Val here for Friday afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Inyard's True Value has everything you need to get your next project done. Located on Main Street in Rochester, Inyard's True Value has the product to get the job done. From tools and supplies to kitchen appliances, Inyard's True Value has got you covered. Call 574-223-4920 or visit www.truevaluecompany.com. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 160,000 participants here in Indiana who take part in high school sports. At First Federal Savings Bank, we offer a wide selection of valuable services for our customers. We offer a variety of deposit products, such as personal and business accounts. We pride ourselves in being one of the top mortgage lenders in Indiana. At First Federal Savings Bank, we offer business loans and business checking accounts. Give us a call at any one of our branch locations and let us help you. Through LPL Financial, our financial services department is here to help you with your financial planning needs. Come see us today and see how our family can help your family. Welcome back here. We're talking sports with Val, and I'm going to mix it up on you. I didn't give you any warning here. Um, been over to Blackadder a couple times this week. Got to uh, see both the Rochester boys and girls in action. I was there uh, filming on Monday as they took on the girls, took on the Argus Dragons. Um, you know, went in the halftime tight at, at zero. Of course, uh, you know, I don't know if the wind played much of a factor, but they were going, Argus was going into the wind in the first half, and they got the wind at their back in the second half, scored four, and won four nil against Rochester. The Zebras still have not scored on uh, Argus in uh, in a game. Yeah, they've never scored against them. Yeah. And that's kind of the issue that... Uh, it's been kind of unfortunately cropping up for Rochester or just in general this season. They've just had trouble finishing. Mm -hmm. It seems like possession hasn't been that big of a problem, and it sounds like if they played a scoreless half against Argus, that they're able to hold their own in terms of possession, but it's just finishing. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, Emma Hodeshell leads this team in goals, but I think they, you know Macy Nelson's helped out, but it just want to diversify the offense, I think, a little bit more. Yeah. They've got a big one coming up uh, Thursday night. We're filming Thursday afternoon, so it'll be played by the time you see this. But conference game with McConaughey, um, this pretty, has been, pretty solid McConaughey team. It's been a pretty good rivalry between Rochester and McConaughey over the years. Kind of, uh, kind of anything can happen. Uh, McConaughey beat Peru 1-0 early in this year. Rochester beat Peru, uh, I think it was 9-0 uh, or 10-0. So yeah, I think it was 10. No, excuse me, 11-0. Yeah. It was 11-0, so... I don't know what that means, but yeah. uh, again, maybe Rochester can get going offensively. I, kn I know Coach Rens Chantal Rensberger really places a great importance on these conference games and winning a conference championship. Yeah. Uh, boys, 
uh, had a nice uh, game on Wednesday night, senior night. They played uh, Tiffany Valley, and you know we were talking before the game. Uh, you know, it might be a really close game, but it really didn't end up being that close. I think it was six one, right? Rochester won six to one. It was what three three zero within what about fourteen minutes. I yeah. mean, it was not a lot of drama in this one. I mean, four zero at the half. Yeah, four zero at the half. Uh, you know, Zach Pickens had a hat trick and. Uh, you know, he kind of admitted yesterday, you know, you know, Coach, I talked with Coach Elmer Roke after the game, he kind of admitted that Zach had been struggling. In fact, uh, you know, Rochester was coming off a 3-2 loss to Peru on Monday, and on Tuesday, instead of having a practice, it was just kind of a team meeting. Mm -hmm. They just kind of gathered and talked about some issues. And, uh, you know, and, you know, he felt, they felt that it really kind of cleared the air and kind of, they got out, they said it was a pretty emotional meeting. And uh, but they also talked a lot about you know soccer and a lot of strategy and tactics and um, you know Valley tried to play a lot of long balls mm -hmm. the, you know just basically kick the ball over Rochester's heads and try to run it down and the Rochester kids were like hey Peru did the same thing to us on Monday so we just need to make the you know make the adjustment and really Valley didn't get a whole lot going they got a PK goal by John Ruiz in the second half but even that was kind of uh, well, sketchy to the Rochester kids. I'm sure the Valley people thought that was a deserved PK. But, yes, but still, I mean, uh, and Parker Wallace played great in goal, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, he there were a couple stops that he made. I mean, where he, he just is very, very instinctive in terms of when to come out and when to stay back. And mm -hmm. there was one stop he even made with his leg because mm -hmm. that was basically the only chance he had to stop it. I mean, he, he, is, he is a great, great goalkeeper and only a sophomore. Yeah. And but you know Pickens at three and Eric Eikenberry another sophomore he had two goals so mm -hmm. it's a pretty young you know talented team. I was talking with uh, you know Zach Pickens after the game and he was I said how would you describe Coach Coach Roke's personality? He goes tough love. Mm -hmm. He goes um, you know you know he he's very demanding but I mean you know he comes from a place of love for his players. He really likes to play. And of course I talked with Coach Roke a couple weeks ago. He said that this the team chemistry is the best. He's had on any team he's ever been a part of, mm -hmm. which is saying something. I mean, yeah, for all the teams he's so, yeah, they've had some ups and downs. They had a, you know a game against North Miami where they won one zero on a goal by Mitchell Schaefer. Um, but it's just they, they haven't been very consistent, I guess you'd say. So let's see if the Valley game can bring about some better play, more consistent play coming uh, moving forward. They got a game against McConaughey at home on Monday night. That'll be an interesting challenge. Yeah. And I was I was talking a little bit after the game to Coach Markley and and you know we were talking about what they have to look forward to you know we've talked about this a little bit you know that sectional is just brutal and he he equivocated it equivocated is that a word he uh, equaled it to uh -huh. uh, Argus you know Coach you know Coach Markley and Coach Rook both came from Argus uh -huh. but he he said you know this is like basically going into a semi state. But it's a sectional round, yeah. you know, because of Canterbury and Concordia and even Manchester. I mean, there's just so many teams that are right. dangerous in that. And yeah, Rochester and Argus are they're going to have to try and navigate those waters somehow. And yeah, it's going to be tough. For the record, Fort Wayne Canterbury is ranked number three. Fort Wayne Concordia is ranked number five, and Culver Academy is ranked number ten. Yeah, I forgot about the academy. <laughs> Jeez, there so are three the, three top ten three teams top 10 in the same sectional, and mm. it's pretty quality. You know, pretty good Manchester team that owns wins over uh, Valley and Rochester this year. And yeah. oh yeah, Argus yeah. they're in that sectional too. Right, and uh, you know the Dragons, a little bit of a struggle getting going this year, but they've uh, they've gotten back to full strength and yeah, nice win. Uh, the other, you know they. they 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 had a, they had their uh, a loss to Plymouth at home last week seven to two where they we talked about that they were up two to one and then Plymouth just uh, just turned the tables in the second half and then you know Argus had their home tournament uh, on Saturday they lose the first game of South Bend Adams three to one but then they come back and beat a good Northwood team two to one mm -hmm. uh, Zionsville wound up beating South Bend Adams in the championship game and then Argus goes to Trinity Greenlaw the other night and Argus loses 4 to nothing so it's just been kind of a year of ups and downs for them. Mm -hmm. They finally got a couple of their suspended players back so that's that's a good sign this is kind of a full complement of players but uh, maybe not as offensively productive as maybe a typical Argus team and then trying to uh fit in some new young kids especially in that back row mm -hmm. when you talk about Bo Fishburne and Ethan Pets. Mhm. Mm I mean, they're definitely good-looking young players, but it's just, 
you know, against the schedule that Argus plays, it's tough. Yeah, tough schedule for sure. But I guess you know a little bit perplexing why uh, the offensive struggles because they didn't lose a whole lot on that offensive side last year. I, yeah, I mean Teddy, you know Teddy Renninger is their leading scorer, but I, you know Teddy is not necessarily a guy who's going to dribble through the defense and make plays. He he kind of needs you know. You know, he, he had great help last year, and it's, I think, kind of, you know, when, when they had guys like, you know, Gabe Stone, but Gabe's graduated, so it's now, it's kind of, who's going to help set up Teddy, who's a great finisher? Okay. Kind of with Zach and, and Schaefer last year. Yeah. Kinda similar. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Argus girls, you know, we talked about them. They had that big win on Monday against um, Rochester. Uh, they seem to be, you know, they've had a few setbacks, but they seem to be, you know, continually. That one, two, three punch when you talk about Lily Hines, Emma Dunlap, and Ariana Allen. I mean, there are not a lot of teams who have that kind of firepower in their front row. Mm. And, you know, their sectional, obviously, at home this year, so that should be an advantage to them. Normally, right. they've been going up to Newton Park, yeah. which we've talked about that before. That part, you know, that field is so narrow mm -hmm. that. You know, despite having success up there, it's a little bit harder for them because they're used to using yeah. that width of the field. She mentioned Argus was also had a really great win on Saturday morning when they beat Eastbrook one nil. Mm -hmm. I mean that that was a great win over Eastbrook. So one nothing over Eastbrook, four nothing over Rochester. So the defense is playing really well. Lizzie Edmonds doing a great job in goal. We're taping this on Thursday, a big game Thursday night at home against Laville. Mm -hmm. uh, this Laville team, I don't know if they're back to where they were, but they're they're better. They're ranked number nineteen. Argus is ranked number five in Class One A. So. Yeah, this Laville team, they may be a rebuilding year or two, but now they're back, it seems like. And yeah. so this will be, you know, Argus hadn't played a sectional opponent prior to the, the Rochester game. Now they get two in a row. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how they do against these sectional opponents. And then, of course, there's that Culver Lady Cavalier team that's kind of lurking. Yeah. Like yeah. great soccer. They are. And, and you talk about uh, being able to put some, uh, some uh, goals up. They've uh, seemed to uh, be doing well on the offense. Right. Culver beat Jimtown at Jimtown the other day. And then 9-0 nine zero, nine zero over or Oregon Davis. Mm -hmm. I mean, Giselle Villegas, Kaylee Hamilton, the two Banks the two Banks sisters, Cassidy and Kenzie. I mean, this team has got a lot of firepower. And the two Hamilton sisters, Kaylee and Maddie. I mean, this team has got a lot of firepower. I, I was just very impressed with what I've seen. And they... And they got a great goalkeeper too, and Sophia Heath. I mean, we talk mm -hmm. about Lizzie, and we talk about you know Kaylee Woods of Rochester, but uh, you know Sophia Heath is a terrific goal goalkeeper herself. I mean, yeah, she was great in that game against Rochester. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, you know, I think I think you know we, their defense is underrated too. So this is a good, you know this is a very good Culver team, the best we've seen in a while. Yeah, should uh, should make for a really you know you got a Laville team that's kind of up and coming. You got Culver that's kind of up and coming. Uh, going up against uh, Argus and then you know Rochester, uh, you know if they could start getting some uh, some goals scored against Argus, you know yeah. who knows what they could do. Yeah, and by the way, Rochester, we talk about Rochester plays McConaughey at home on Thursday. They play Bremen on Saturday at Bremen, and that'll that's another you know two teams in the same sectional. Mm -hmm. And Bremen's always a pretty solid team themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bremen is uh, you know. Kind of like Laville, they're they're perennial, uh, really good soccer team. Yeah. So, uh, you know, down the road a little bit, uh, Winnemac is is having a, a pretty good year. We've talked about the the Warriors soccer team; they've uh, seem to be doing pretty good. Yeah. When you talk about Thomas Fierens and Alex Stark and uh, Housinger, th this is this is a pretty prolific scoring uh, Winnemac team. They're, they've been playing very good soccer all year. Mm -hmm. Haven't heard a whole lot lately. I, I know Caston dropped a, uh, a tough one uh, the other day, but uh, what what have they been doing? Uh, well, they play. Yeah, they, they they were they got off to a good start against North Miami the other day, and then the thunder thunderstorms came. So they haven't played they haven't played a full eighty minutes in a while. Yeah. But again, you talk about Jonathan Pacheco and John Aguilar Mendez. Uh, they've got some good scoring punch in that front row and row and Jellison. Yeah, and they're pretty young too, right? Yeah, I mean, Aguilar Mendez is a freshman. Pacheco is, a, I think he's a senior, but yeah, pretty young. Yeah. Uh, the two, uh, in the, they got the two Ziders in the back, Cade and Talon. Mm -hmm. But yeah, got kind of a nice mix of kind of younger players and veteran players. Mm -hmm. Any other on the pitch that you need to mention? Oh. Not really a whole, yeah. 
that that whole lot again John Ruiz from Valley is very impressive. I know he had a he had an injury, he had a knee, and he was out for a couple of weeks. And mm -hmm. what you can see, he, he, he even though Valley lost to Rochester, he really impressed me with kind of how he moves on the field and how he kind of directs things as a leader on the field. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, that's that's what's going on right now in the soccer in the world of soccer. The world of soccer. Let's move uh, into the gym. Talk a little uh, volleyball. Uh, start off with the zebras. Um, tough, tough match. Uh, a couple tough matches, but uh, the one that I went to and, and filmed was at, at Southwood. We knew it wasn't going to be easy. Obviously, Southwood number eleven and one A, but uh, uh, you know, looked like some different pieces for the zebras. As there's been some injuries, there's been some other things. I don't know exactly why yeah. everybody was out, but you know. We mentioned that the front row obviously is is missing Lexi Thomas uh, quite a bit, mm -hmm. and uh, I know Emma Sells was out in that one, and, and they were missing her in the back row as well. Right. Well, they got they've, they're zero and six since coming back from their COVID pause. They lost at Southwood. They lost. They went zero and four on Saturday at the Harrison Invite in West Lafayette, which is the toughest tournament they play every year. They had to play you know some really good. I mean, they had to play Harrison, a four A team, on their home floor. They played yeah. Danville. They had to play Pioneer again for a right. second time, and then they had to play Lowell, a 4A team. Uh, and then they go to Manchester, and they, you know, it, it's uh, you were excited to see them back because Lexi Thomas was back against Manchester. Okay. Emma Sells was back against Manchester. But, again, they just struggled, and they lose to Manchester in three. Uh, Manchester came out and really played some inspired volleyball, played well in the back row, kept the ball off the floor, and, uh, you know, were able to... and. Uh, you know, had some su success serving. Rochester's passing was a bit off, and uh, kind of a disappointing loss. But again, they just seemed rusty. Um, we'll see if they can get it together. We, if they can, again, they were they were playing so well before the pause, right. and I think they just have. It's just kind of they've had to restart their season, and they've just been struggling a little bit. Yeah, and you, uh, but, you say rusty, and you'd think, okay, well, they just played four games on Saturday, they wouldn't be. But if they have a couple of new girls back in the places. Yeah, they, uh, Coach uh, Leap was Aaron Leap was kind of mixing and matching with her lineups. Uh, we saw Lily Lett get some varsity playing time. She's a athletic young freshman player. Apparently, mm -hmm. she also got quite a bit of playing time at the Harrison tournament. She got some playing time against Manchester. She's she seems to be really comfortable as a freshman to go with you know Bowlinger. Mm -hmm. um, Strasser had some time had against some time Southwood. Against Southwood. She didn't play as much against Manchester from the match that I saw. Now yeah. that Emma Sells is back, right? Uh, but um, yeah, and uh, I, you know, I thought Manchester did a good job of digging up um, Emily Hughes. I thought Rochester's they, they I thought Rochester's block was better, uh, but uh, it's still gonna it's gonna take a while. It was interesting, you know, right, the final score of the Manchester match was 25-20, 25-20, 26-24. In the third set, Manchester was up 24-18, and Rochester scored six points in a row, six points in a row on match point to yeah. tie it, and then Manchester right. won the last two points. The point that got it to 25-24 was the ball ended, like, right on the line, mm -hmm. on the baseline, which some Rochester fans didn't like that call. It was close, but, mm -hmm. yeah, it was a big call, but... Again, I mean, they they didn't again they they didn't give up, but they're just I think struggling to just string, get some momentum and get a rhythm out there. It seems yeah. like, and they have a big one Thursday night that'll be uh, you know done by the time you watch this. But Northfield Norse come into town, and you know that's yeah. that's one that defending, uh, defending TRC champs, but yeah. they're not the same Northfield team they saw last year. Right, Northfield at home on Thursday, and then Peru at home on Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. And that's a much much improved Peru team. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been it's been, yeah. I mean, it's, it's been a little bit of a struggle. Well, but again, there's these girls have played together before, and they, you know, they they know the work ethic that it takes. I mean, uh, it's hard to know where this season's going. But again, their sectional is winnable. Right. Uh, so, you know, South Central's having a great year, but you know, Rochester has dominated that sectional the last two years. So. I mean, can they, we can still they, have another. We still have another month to go. Right? Can they find a way in the next month to put everything together? Mm -hmm. I mean, the pieces are there, but can they put them together, get them to fit, and get them to work together as a team before yeah. that sectional? Yeah. This has just been a reminder of how f kind of fragile that chemistry can be, mm -hmm. and when you have a 
something like a COVID pause, how it can break apart. Yeah, it stops and starts uh, mm -hmm. really hurt the momentum, obviously. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, another team that, that we got to see this week uh, was Culver. Uh, we were doing the uh, the Culver game against Pioneer the other night, and uh, you know this is a this is a good young Culver team. They, I'm going to trust you on this. You've seen Culver in person more than I have. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you look at the varsity score, it, it wasn't great, right? Mm -hmm. But they beat the JV, mm -hmm. and I, I know we don't talk a lot of JV, but that Pioneer JV team had only lost one set mm -hmm. uh, the entire season, so they were undefeated going into it. A lot of those same players, you know, Bryn Barrett, and you, you talk, uh, you know, uh, Overmeyer, and some of those younger players, the Livy Overmeyer, not Lucy. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of those players are, are so also playing a lot of varsity time as well. They've got a lot to look forward to as those girls get into their sophomore year and, and beyond. Because, uh, but when it came down to varsity time, yeah, Pioneer obviously overmatched them quite a bit, mm -hmm. but you know. They're they're a team that can can compete in the next few years. Mm -hmm. So, but you got to also look at Pioneer. You know their their varsity. Uh, they had uh, a so so day on Saturday. I don't think Coach Nice probably would have you know said it was a great day. Yeah, here's but, another team that's kind of been up and down. I mean they they went two and two at the Harrison tournament. You know they, you know they beat a pretty decent. Danville team, and then they lose uh, in three to Harrison, and then they come back and beat Rochester, and then they lose in two to a you know Covington, and you know Covington's good every right. year. I mean we've seen them. Rochester knows that very yeah, well. Yeah, Covington is tough. So yes, yeah, and then they but then they rebound and get a nice win at Culver, but um, so it's it's hard to know where it's hard hard to know if they're trending in the right direction. Now, Pioneer goes to cast on Thursday night. That'll have been played by the time any of you see this. But mm -hmm. So um, that'll be another kind of measure in terms of how well they are uh, faring against their uh, uh, conference competition and how they do against more athletic teams. Because mm -hmm. this casting team is playing very good volleyball right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is they're, they're really playing well right now. Yeah. Talking about putting it together and, and figuring it out. They went to that Triton tournament. They went three and one the other day, mm -hmm. and uh, you know they beat Knox. When was the last time Cassie beat Knox in volleyball? Mm -hmm. They beat John Glenn. Yeah, I mean those are both three A schools. Great. I mean th those are nice wins, and you know they lose to Triton in the championship match, but they're playing well, and I mean they got a lot of weapons. When you talk yeah. about Maddie Smith and Isabel Scales yeah. and Abby Williamson, I mean. And you know they're they're you know they they have that two setter system and they, you can see Castle's getting comfortable with it with Annie Harsh and Delaney Lowry. Mm -hmm. yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that uh, how that goes at Caston on Thursday night mm -hmm. with them taking on Pioneer because you talk about their setters getting comfortable. Uh, to me, Pioneer setters, if anything, are kind of uncomfortable right now. It just seems like they're you know they have three setters, but I, I don't see like anybody kind of really just stepping up and, and taking that role on. And wanting to be the the main man, which I think is just youth. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're young. Yeah. You know, they're they're all sophomores and, and a freshman. Two sophomores yeah. and a freshman. Yeah. So that's that's uh, you know something that they're going to have to. But if your coach, if you, if I was in Coach Nye's shoes, that would be a good problem to have. Yeah. I mean, hey, I got three girls that can set. They're mm -hmm. kind of struggling right now, but I got three girls that can set. Yeah. Most teams are like, who can set? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's a good problem to have. Yeah, again, we get to look forward to things while coaches have to say take it one match at a time. I'm really looking forward to a Pioneer softwood matchup in the sectional because that's a very good softwood team. Yes. And they also have a two-setter system. Yes. And they, uh, yeah, definitely uh, you can tell the softwood kids they know their roles very well, which mm -hmm. is maybe something that Pioneers uh, still trying to figure still out. Still trying to figure out a little yeah. bit. Yeah, I think they are. That that'll be interesting because, you know, could this mm -hmm. be the year? <laughs> yeah, you know that somebody knocks Pioneer. It's been what fifteen straight mm -hmm. in sectionals. So, uh, so and uh, Caston wants it to be them, right? Yeah, Caston wouldn't mind it being them yeah. either. Um, where uh, Valley? I know they've struggled a couple of matches here. Yeah, I lost to Columbia City the other night, and then came back and beat Laville on Tuesday. But I'm not. Uh, again, uh, they've been able to beat. The competition that's maybe that they should beat. It's right. can they beat those three A and four A teams? That's mm -hmm. been kind of the issue for them. So uh, 
again, uh, they, they've been dealing with some injuries. They've got, ultimately, they want to, it's key to get Bree Sheets back, because she, to give her, have her and Mallory Durkis on the front row, that'll give you a really formidable front row. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, the young kids, Wagner and uh, Costello, have been filling in, but it's, you want Bree Sheets and Ava Smith for the long run. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the back row for Valley, I really like. Uh, you know, when you talk about Brayden Bainey and uh, Libero, she's one of the best in the area. Mm -hmm. Just got to find a way to get those, you know, 50-50 games to go their way. Right. I mean, they they played some tough competition. I mean, Columbia oh, yeah. City is tough. Wawa C is tough. Yeah. Plymouth is tough. I mean, those, no, you know, those aren't easy matches at all. Yeah. No breaks in the schedule for them. Right. Sure. And the conference schedule will get tougher moving forward. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've, you know, you know, they've still got to play Southwood. Mm -hmm. um, they're still uh, again. We're taping this on Thursday. They go to Manchester on Thursday. That's a Manchester team that looked pretty good the other night against mm -hmm. Rochester. Well, I mean, yeah, we'll see how that goes for them. They're they're kind of backloaded. Yeah, on their schedule. Manchester is they're young, but they are pretty athletic and pretty tall. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're not bad. They 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 show me something. Yeah. So you know, but again, if you, if you want to, you know, Valley Stars play Northfield and Southwood and Rochester. So yeah, yeah. They're sitting really good in the conference right now, but it could go either way. It could, yeah. yeah, yeah. So they still have an opportunity if they can if they can get through that uh, gauntlet there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Boy, that sectional is going to be tough. Mm -hmm. You talk about Wawasi and Northwood and Valley, all right in there. Mm -hmm. Well, any other volleyball you want to talk? Talk about college volleyball for a sec. Purdue Northwest won a match. They didn't win a match at all last year. And they won a match the other day, and who had thirty four assists? Uh, Olivia I, I think Brooke. We know her. Yeah. Olivia Brooke. Yeah. So congratulations to. I, I saw that stat line. I was looking down through there, and I was like, "Wow, thirty-four assists!" So she stepped right up and and uh, playing well and early in her freshman year. Yeah. So that's great. Yeah. We we knew she could do it. <laughs> I'm not the least bit surprised. Right. Right. Knew she could do it. So congratulations. So that's the first match that they've won in over a year. Yeah, since 2019. Wow, that's impressive. So. Well, congratulations on that. Uh, with that, we'll take a quick break, and we'll come back and wrap it up here in segment number three with some cross country and uh, golf and some tennis. Mm -hmm. We'll be back here in a moment. We're talking sports with Val. The lawyers and staff of Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins LLP are here to provide the highest quality legal and professional service for their clients, presently and for the future. From estate planning and trust to adoption and family law to appeals, probate, and more, Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins has the knowledge and experience to serve you now and in the future. See a full list of services online at petersonwagoner.com. The Winning Edge is your local provider for all your sport and school athletic needs. From providing customizable sportswear to engraving trophies, The Winning Edge strives to help teams find their edge on the playing field. Call 574 223 6090 or visit their website at www.thewinningedgeathletics.com. Timbercrest Senior Living Community in North Manchester offers services for all stages of life, including independent living, where you can maintain your independence, assisted living in an environment that will suit your individual needs nursing and memory care for those in need of full-time care. Licensed professionals provide rehabilitation services, including physical and occupational therapy. Call to schedule a visit at Timbercrest, a place to call home. Hey, welcome back here talking sports with Val, and, and we've been through football. We've talked about all the changes that are happening there, talked about volleyball, talked about soccer. Uh, let's wrap it up here. Uh, let's talk some cross country, and we'll talk some tennis, and uh, we'll talk some girls golf as well. You were at Valley on Saturday. I was kind of looking for you because I actually did something that I've never done in my life, and I went to a tennis match, mm -hmm. and I was very confused because I didn't even know that they had started. <laughs> I was like, looked at my wife, and have they started? Or are they still warming up? She's like, I don't know. <laughs> They started moving the balls in the yeah. point thing. I, th mm -hmm. I think they have. <laughs> so I was looking for you for some guidance, but then I remembered that you were going to uh, to Valley for the Invitational. Mm -hmm. So how did the Invitational go there? I know 
It went pretty well for, uh, for two, Rochester. Two really close down to the wire meets. The Rochester boys won by four points over a good Garrett team. Mm -hmm. The Rochester girls lost by one point to Manchester. Mm -hmm. So both meets came right down to the wire. And this, I think there were like eight girls teams and 13 boys teams. So the, mm -hmm. and for the boys to finish first and the girls finish second, the Rochester cross country team is doing fine. Girls wise, obviously they're still waiting to get Madeline Calloway and Araceli Ochoa back, but uh, that's you know, that makes that even more impressive that they finished second right, with those but, two still out. Yeah, and they, they have now they haven't beaten Manchester yet this year, but this is as close as they've come. And you know now that they know that if they can get healthy, they know that they're going to have pro, you know an advantage. I mean, even if they get even if Madeline and Araceli aren't you know one hundred and ten percent, they're going to have a good chance. Um, you know, Zoe Seward was second overall. She she ran a 21, 21, uh, 17 or 20, 21, 13, I think it was. Uh, and then, uh, you know, Kendall Bradley came back from her injury, ran, I think, 23 minutes flat, 24 minutes flat for Elena Bodie, who was back from a quarantine. You know, she's going to get faster. It was just, again, if you don't run for a week, it's, oh, it, yeah. it affects your conditioning. Yeah. You know, Maddie Hines been ran 24.08. She's been getting faster. Uh, so, again, when they get their full, you know, complement of runners back, they'll, and th they're confident that they will, mm -hmm. then certainly you're going to have to say they're going to be favored in the TRC because the TRC will also be at Valley on October 2nd. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, uh, on the boys' side, Rochester won it. It was, we we had no idea. We were, you know, because... If you're covering a cross country meet, you have to be good at counting. Like, okay, because okay, was like, is this guy fourth or fifth or sixth? It's it's a it's a numbers game. Yeah. So Dylan Steininger was the Rochester front runner for the first time in his career as a senior. Mm -hmm. He was fourth. Peyton Hyatt was seventh, and then Chris Rohr I think was like ninth. Yeah. So they had three top ten guys. Garrett had a couple of good guys too. So. We really didn't know, and then the numbers, you know, worked out in Rochester's favor. Wes Steininger, you know, continues to run well. He was like 15th, so he gives them a fourth. And then Adrian Ochoa, only a freshman, ran like 2002. He was fifth, and now that that fifth guy is getting faster, that's going to help the team a lot. Right. I mean, you know, the front who the front four are going to be, right. maybe in differing order, but you know who the front four is going to get that fifth guy, whether it's Adrian Ochoa or Reese Johnson or Jacob Brubaker. Right. You know, if somebody can get, or, or Lane Shank, if somebody can get faster, that'll help the whole team out. Yeah. But it's interesting, Dylan, that was the first time Dylan's ever been the Rochester frontrunner. You know, Chris Rohr had been the frontrunner of the first two meets of the year, but hey, the Rochester boys have run three meets this year. They won two of them. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Yeah. And the Manchester invite, that was against Penn and Valpo. Sure. And Morgan Township and all these great teams. So. Right. This team is, uh, you know, can they beat Wabash and the TRC? Uh, I gotta see it. I think I still think still think you have to see the Apaches are the favorites, but boy, this team is is really you know pretty tight knit and pretty. They're not letting the girls steal steal all all my headlines. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're having a great year, and you know you look at the times. I know the times aren't like eye popping. Mm -hmm. I mean, Dylan ran seventeen fifty six, but that was, everybody's times were slow at Valley, hmm. and they've they've redesigned that course about two three years ago. And there's a really steep section in the woods now, and okay. everybody talks about that. And it takes a lot out of your legs. And even when you get out of the woods, it's kind of, it's it's you got to pace yourself because if you if you if you take it too hard, you're going to run out of steam by that second mile when you're in the woods. Yeah. And you're going to, it's so it's an interesting course, and I think it, it really is going to help those teams that ran the valley in by when they get ready for a conference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've always been. I've been to that course uh, at Valley quite a bit and watched a, quite a few cross country, but never mm -hmm. been in the woods. So yeah. it was always kind of a mystery, like what goes on yeah. in there. You know, where's where's it go? And so they've got some some pretty steep hills in there that they're having to deal with. Yeah, yeah, and you can tell Peyton Hyatt. He was, you know, as a senior. I mean, and he's talked and and coaches have talked about this before. Again, if you, if you get too aggressive too early and you, oh, i got to stay with the lead pack, it's not going to work out for you. You could tell Peyton was running a very measured race. He let a couple guys pass him that second mile. Mm -hmm. But then the third mile, he passed them back. Right. So, I mean, 
it's you know strategy means a lot in these races and uh it's not just you know conditioning and running you know 40 miles a week it's uh, well that's where the experience really plays plays into it because it's it's hard because you see somebody going by you and you want to stay with them and but you also got to remember i got to keep my pace and you know it pays yeah. off when you see you right. go by them then in the next mile yeah especially on a tough course like that yeah so. It's a good sign, you know. The Valley Boys, Evan Myers ran, I think, uh, nineteen twenty, and right, right around there. And it's a pretty, you know, Brady Rogers was their number two runner, and then the next three are all freshmen. When you talk about Isaac Whetstone and Eli Sturk and Aaron Backus, so it's just a matter of those young kids gaining some experience and gaining that conditioning that you need to have in these. Because it, again, when you go, again, it's a huge transition from eighth grade cross country to ninth grade. Oh, yeah. You need to go from three k to five k. It's a huge yeah. transition. Uh, for Caston, Austin Digg ran great, second overall in 1735. He had beaten by a kid from Garrett at the end, but he looks just he looked great the other day. I mean, he's running as well as ever. Fortunately, the bad news for Caston: no Edison Byram out for the year. Only a sophomore broke his ankle. Mm. They hope to have him back for a track season. In in competition, broke his ankle or uh, no? Okay, somewhere else. Somewhere else. Okay, well. Uh, but yeah, you you mentioned that. Let, let's talk about that a little bit. The the jump from junior high to, to high school because, yeah. you know, if you're playing basketball, if you're playing football, you know, if you're, if you're, even if you're running track, you know, they don't change the size of the court yeah. or the yeah. field or even a, you know, a mile in track is still a mile in track. Yeah. Now you're going from a, a 3K to a 5K. I mean, that's, that's a big change. And then you're running against kids that have already done it for a year, two years, three years, whatever. Right. So right. That's you, a, that's a pretty big jump yeah coaches can tell you things but you have to sometimes find out the hard way mm -hmm. on the girls side like look at a girl like lucy rangel from rochester she ran like 21 49 mm -hmm. she ran i think 21 45 at the manchester by one week earlier 21 49 again but only while well, all the other girls were about 20 to 30 seconds slower she was only four seconds slower but the key was that she paced herself that first mile and they had a lot more energy toward the end mm -hmm. and she's you know for a team that had again they had no seniors last year so how is a newcomer going to break into this team? Well, she's doing it, mm -hmm. and you know, to, so to have her as kind of the number two behind Zoe right now. But when they get Madeline and Araceli back, she'll be the number four, mm -hmm. and Kendall can be the number five. I mean, this team is again. We've been saying it for a long time. If they can get healthy, they're loaded. Right, right. When you can, when you can have what's currently your number two, now be in your number four and still get those times. That's going to yeah. be huge. Yeah. So. Well, we'll uh, we'll look forward to that um, west side of our coverage area, Winnemac, uh, Pioneer. What, what have they been doing? Uh, Winnemac had the, had the week off last week, so yeah. they've had two weeks to prepare for the new Prairie Invite coming up this week. It's a very good Winnemac girls team right now. When you talk about so that's the Smith Hoover, uh, Kelsey Wagner. New Prairie is still the largest in the state. Over 100 schools. Yep. Yeah. So that'll be this week, and then Academy the next week. And then the Academy that next week. They are holding. They are holding them both, right? They are holding them as both, now. as as far as we know. Okay. So over a hundred schools at the um, New Prairie Invite, over eighty schools at the Culver Academy Invite. So, and of course, different classes, and it's it, it's broken down by size. Right. And, but you can run in a class above yours if you'd like, or just take a couple of your runners and run them in the higher class. Maybe mm -hmm. to have them run against top competition, you, you can. Have a lot of so of our choices of our schools who all goes to New Prairie. Uh, everybody except for Argus. Okay. So Caston, every, everybody. Culver. Uh, Pioneer, Rochester Valley, Winnemac. Yeah, they all get to run Agony Hill. Mm -hmm. It's funny. I was talking with Valley coach Mike Engler, and he says I don't like talking about the New Prairie course because when I talk about Agony Hill, the kids get kind of queasy. Yeah, that's probably one of the most painful courses that they run all year, isn't it? Right. It's just an iconic course. I yeah. mean, but you ask some kids, and they say it's their favorite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta wonder the, about the, their the mentality of the cross country runner. Yeah. Well, they're the, yeah. I mean, you got to be just a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, to to do that, yeah. I mean, it's it's a tough sport. Mm -hmm. Mentally, it's just you know physically, mentally, it's just it's tough. Yeah. Boy, the Winnemac team, they're, they're they're definitely looking like the favorites in the Hoosier North. Uh the girl on the girls' side. We'll mm -hmm. see about the boys. Boys should be pretty pretty competitive, I think. Mm-hmm. 
obviously without, without Byram, Casson's going to be struggling a, a little bit to win a conference championship on the boys' side. Have they been uh, been able to put together a complete team over at Caston for the boys? I know they were kind of a little missing a few pieces here and there, but have they been uh, consistently able to? Uh, no, I don't think so. I, I, know, I know they didn't with the girls. I think they only had four girls. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you, they have uh, Delaney Strasser and Emma Stinson and uh, Mackenzie Radebush and uh, Stevana Young, but I think they've they have uh, Maddie Sprout. I think I think uh, Mackenzie was not there on Saturday. I think they will eventually have a full team. Full team. But the cast and boys, I think, have been struggling numbers wise a little bit. Um, Brady Evans did not run the other day. I think because he had soccer. I know Brady and Caleb. St Brady Evans, and Caleb, St Caleb Stins are both doing soccer and cross country, so it's kind of depending mm -hmm. on who's available when. Yeah. Any other uh, cross country you want to talk? Pioneer. Uh, girls finished 12th of the McConaughey invite last Saturday, and the Pioneer boys finished 7th. Yeah. Violet Montgomery uh, was the front runner for the Pioneer girls. She ran 23. Mm -hmm. And then Kylie Ferris ran in the 22s, I think, ran 22, 2240. Yeah. Uh, for the Pioneer boys, uh, Jackson Baker is having a great year. And then Leighton Dot. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was a really solid 1 2. And then, uh, you know, Cooper and Brooke are right behind those two guys. Yeah, I saw Brooke took a big chunk of time off of his best at uh, the last meet, so mm -hmm. that's impressive. And yeah, they'll be right in that Who's Your North Boys mix, I think. Yeah, Violet, uh, you know, she's pushing right around that uh, twenty mark, so she she she's might be able to break a, that. She's having a great year. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, she's having a great year. I'll be curious to see how she does against you know the the better competition coming up. Yeah, yeah. So they'll be at um, New Prairie, and I think they go to the academy, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, and for the Valley, uh, going back to the Valley invite, Chesney Miller ran another good race, uh, I think 21, uh, 21 20, somewhere in there. But again, everybody's times were a little bit slow. Mm -hmm. But Chesney's had a great year. And then, you know, Bailey Bussard's a, a freshman who's uh, really, she's been the number two runner. Heard that and, name before. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, they're having a good year. And then uh, Savannah, uh, I know there are a couple of Argus girls I didn't know about, uh, but. That ran it. Uh, they don't have a complete team, but they have a couple of nice runners who could be regional qualifiers moving forward. Okay, good. And uh, yeah, uh, the yeah uh, Culver Destin Green ran well for the Culver boys the other day. I should mention him at uh, Valley. Okay. Well, and the Culver Junior High boys won another meet. Another one. Yeah. Wow. Four kids in the top ten overall. Yeah. And they won the meet at uh, Valley. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah. So. so congratulations to Coach Tina Stacy and her kids. Right. Um, so let's move over on to the hard court. So uh, Rochester is quietly, I don't know, quietly, but uh, they're putting together a nice little season here this year with a bunch of young, uh, you know, I th no seniors, right? No seniors? Yeah. So a uh, nice little season. I think I saw they were 7-3 and three, mm -hmm. uh, overall. And, and uh, what were they, 3-2 and two or in the conference? Two and three, two and three and two. Yeah, three and two. They lost. They lost at Peru, and then they lost at home to Maconaqua mm -hmm. uh, last Saturday. But I mean, I was they, there. Yeah, <laughs> they they're playing. You know, they they're in a you know the the TRC is very well balanced this year. After Peru, mm -hmm. Peru is clearly atop the conference. Mm -hmm. You know, Rochester they lose to Maconaqua three to two, and they come back and beat Valley on Monday three to two, and then they go back. They come back and beat Whitco three to two on Wednesday. So when you have all these three to two matches, it's a sign that there's really good balance within the conference. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, all three. You know, Valley. Ha excuse me, Rochester has no seniors uh, on their team, but all three of their singles players are juniors. Mm -hmm. When you talk about Braden Zink and Brock Bowers and Drew Strasser, so they're. Fairly well experienced, yeah. And all three guys are former doubles players, so they've been adapting really well to singles. Um, I heard that uh, Brock had a little bit of a match the other day. Yeah, his match against Cam Manuel of Valley. I wrote about this on the website. It's hard to explain what that match was like. It went on for two and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> he won five seven six three six three, and I mean, both guys were just exhausted by the end. It was an interesting kind of tactical matchup. There were just these long rallies. Neither was trying to... They were just trying to keep it in play and just being careful with their shots. And Cam Manuel is an interesting guy because he, he's lefty and he hits only forehands. 
Huh. I, which, so how you... again, if you're used to watching like Federer and Nadal and Djokovic, you're probably saying, well, "What the hell is he talking about?" He basically runs. He's left-handed, and he hits at, all of his shots are forehand. So if, even if Brock was trying to hit it to his backhand, he would run around to the other side yeah. to get it. And because Brock doesn't clobber the ball, he he could do that. Yeah. But. The thing about Manuel is he could kind of he he could mix it up. I mean, he wasn't just a straight forehand. Sometimes he would cross court. Sometimes down the line, so he, he could place it pretty well. And meanwhile, Brock was you know was basically a baseline player, but at, there were times when he would hit a, some moon balls, and so it was just kind of weird how just weird. Every point was just long, long, long. You know, kind of waiting for the other guys to make an error. There were a couple points where Brock hit like five volleys in a row, which was really weird because Brock's again you don't see a lot of that in high school tennis. But Brock, I mean, it was really impressive. But it was you know the Rochester Valley match was it was interesting. I mean, it was it was two two, and all these matches were over with, and then all the kids are gathered around. They're watching this one match, and Brock, you know, he was down love two in the third set, but came back to win six three. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh that's crazy. You know, you see those times. You know, when you go into professional tennis maybe but uh that's that's got to be right up there and as far right. as high school goes yeah with that, yeah again if you're used to seeing the you know wimbledon or the u.s open and seeing these three four hour matches i mean that doesn't happen very often in high school tennis right these long drawn out matches but i mean none of the sets even went to a tiebreaker which was really weird yeah but yeah it was uh um, yeah i mean the crowd was really into it it was fun it was it was great atmosphere it was yeah. great love to see people like that but uh because again, tennis—that's the nature of tennis. And you talked about it. if you're just a casual fan, you have to be watching the match intently to see how the the scoring is going. Mm -hmm. Because the kids are kind of expected to say what the score is, but they don't always do it, or at least they don't always do it loud enough for people to pay attention. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you have to say, oh, okay, what is it? Is it two one or three two? Or yeah. what, you know, what's the what's the score in this game? Is it fifteen forty or thirty all? Or so yeah. So it was. Uh, but every but this valley match, everybody was really just tuned into this one match. It was really fun to watch. But uh, all the matches were great. All the matches were competitive. Uh, the match of one singles, Dylan Neese beat Braden Zink from Rochester seven five seven five. That was a really great match. It was an interesting contrast in styles. You know, Dylan is all pure power. He's just trying to overpower you. And you know, Braden was kind of you know hitting those tops, putting on a spin on the ball, trying to get Dylan off balance. It was a really interesting contrast in styles. Mm -hmm. um, same thing at one doubles. Anna competed and. Um, Cooper Walls going up against you know Cody Smith and Tanner Reinhardt. So it was a really interesting match. Mm -hmm. And then you know you know um, you know Cooper is a very good baseline player. And but some of the, sometimes the Valley guys would move forward. Sometimes they would move back. And I think they caught the Rochester kids off balance sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of intricacies, and you know yeah. I, I guess my complaint is they didn't uh, they didn't say the scores loud enough to hear in the car. Yeah, <laughs> maybe I should have got out, but. I didn't know I needed to take a chair, but yeah, you know, it, it's it's interesting. I mean, to to see and, and right, and again, sportsmanship. Yeah, that's the that's why the IHSA. I mean, we we talk a lot about sportsmanship. It's it's more important than tennis and just about every sport because there are no line judges. There's no right. There's no you can't appeal to the video review to look at did that ball land on the line or two inches beyond the line. Right. It is it is an honesty system. It is. Well, and I was asking Carrie, I'm like, do, what other sport do you warm up your opponent? Yeah. I mean, I, I can't think of any. Is there another sport where you warm up your opponent? Not in high school sports. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so it's like, you know, they're warming up, and that's the thing is, you know, when they start, it doesn't look any different than when they're warming up, kind mm -hmm. of, and like, did they start? Are they going? <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of, and... That's the other thing too that I noticed that I didn't know that there wasn't an official. Yeah. You know, but I guess if you have three or four matches going at the same time, you're, you know, you can you can really get into it trying to find officials for, you know, that many different courts and how do you right. set them up and right. You know, do you have line judges and yeah? About so. one, about once a year, you'll see a coach step in as a line judge mm -hmm. in case the two players are uh, not getting along. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Sometimes you see a, line, a coach step in as a, but they've they've I'm sure all played but, enough tennis that they know. Right, they know, and yeah. it's pretty. It's very rare. I, yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was very quiet as far as you know. You didn't hear a lot of chirping from the kids or anything like that. They were very respectful and yeah, 
Like, interesting. Something new. Yeah, yeah. So. But, uh, yeah, the TRC, again, Peru is kind of the top dog, but uh, when you go, you're going to see a lot of com you're gonna see a lot of competitive tennis most nights. Mm -hmm. but Robert Bazo and Jake Freeman having a great year of two doubles for Rochester as well. Yeah. And for Valley, you know, we talked about Dylan Neese. Um, again, Cam Manuel played his heart out. I felt, you know, I, I, you know, it felt bad for him. Uh, and then, uh, you know, Wyatt Ryder uh, having a nice year at three, three singles uh, as well. Yeah. Uh, so on the uh, on the golf course, I, I saw the uh, the Valley uh, girls team, uh, you know, major uh, front page, I guess you will, uh, the other day. Finished second in the TRC with a 364. Mm -hmm. uh, last year they won the TRC with a 382. Mm -hmm. So they improved their score by 18 strokes, but they and went got from second. first place to second place. And the reason why was a McConaughey Lady Braves team that was basically unstoppable. Mm -hmm. I mean, they shot a 338. That is big time. Uh, remember, they, they, I mean, they, you know, they shot like a 171, which was their nine-hole school record. So just, again, multiply that by two. Mm -hmm. You would think, well, if they shoot a, in the 340s, they're playing well. They shot 338. Wow. Again, to put that in perspective, when Rochester made state in 2012... They won the TRC with a 347 with the Lingenfelter sisters. The next year, Rochester made state shot one conference with a 354. I mean, this is, I mean, then my, I'm not totally sure about this. McConaughey might have set the conference record That's... for best score. And the conference medalist was Daisy Williams of McConaughey, their number five player. Uh -huh. And she shot an 80. Really? And she's a freshman. So 338, so you divide that by five. So what does that come out to per player? Is it four or five scores? Four, well, you're dividing it by four, four. because the top four scores. Top four yeah. scores. So, I mean, that's that's in the 80s. 85, yeah, around, yeah. around an 85, 84, 85 average. That's just terrific. They have three of the top five individual players. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, McConaughey, so this is a McConaughey team. They just didn't win conference, but you got to be paying attention to them as a possible state qualifier. If they can keep shooting it in the high 330s, low 340s. Have they been doing that a lot? Uh, they played well. I mean, they were they were the, no doubt they were the favorites going in, but we had no idea they were that good. Yeah. You know, McConaughey goes to that sectional at Chippendale and Kokomo, uh, and they'll be competing with Western. Mm -hmm. Western made it to state last year, so we'll see if McConaughey can overtake them. But yeah, if if, if McConaughey can keep shooting in the three thirties, they're in that state conversation. Was that in Warsaw? The TRC. TRC. It was in Huntington at Huntington, Maple, Maple Grove Golf Course. Yeah. So Valley was second. Lily Alt was was Valley's number one player, which uh, was surprising. I don't think Lily has been their number one player at any point this year in any match. Mm -hmm. And she shoots eighty nine and makes the All Conference team for the second straight year. Lily just she she plays best in those big tournaments. Yeah. And then Kane Smala with a lifetime best of eighty nine. She, you know, she shot 98 at last year's conference, so she improves her score by nine strokes on the same course, and she makes all conference. So, congrats to those two kids, and then you know, Madeline Weaver had a 93, and Molly Moriarty had a 94, Cheney Canada had a hundred. Uh, this is a Valley team that, you know, again they made it to regional last year. We'll see if they can do it. You know, the, the sectional is this Saturday at Warsaw. We'll see if they can do it again. It's a tough sectional though. Plymouth, Northwood, Warsaw, all in there. Mm -hmm. Rochester was fifth with a 394. Um, Ava Thomas was third overall among individuals. She shot an 84. She made the all-conference team. Uh, Peyton Moore shot an 89, made the all-conference team, tied for ninth with Caden Smalot. Mm -hmm. So, can rest to those two. Again, Ava's only a freshman. Peyton's only a sophomore. So, pretty young. You know, they talked about how, you know, I talked with the girls after, you know, I talked with the Valley girls. I mean, we knew they're best friends already because mm -hmm. they, you know, they're, they're all basically in the same grade with, except for Cheney. The Rochester girls, they talk about how close-knit, you know, and even Chad Thomas noted, noted how close-knit they were and that mm -hmm. they just really enjoy playing with each other, even though they're all different grades. Mm -hmm. You know, Ava's a freshman, Peyton's a sophomore. Um, Savannah Eccles is a uh, junior, I think. Mm -hmm. Kat, Rensber Kat Rensberger and Reagan, Reagan Becker are both seniors. So it's an interesting mix of players. So 394, 18-hole best score of the year for Rochester, but finished fifth, but mm -hmm. still a season best for 18 holes. Yeah. Uh, we had a uh, conference champion in the Hoosier North Conference, uh, one of our schools. Winnipeg just dominated. 397, they won by 70 strokes. Knox 70. 70. Knox had a 467. Wow. They were second. Yeah. Uh, you know, 
when you talk about Bianca Huizar, Janet Calfi, and Kira Businski, they think they were one, two, three. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Olivia Link also made the all-conference team. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a girl from Pioneer made the all-conference team, and Ashlyn Brook. Yeah. Did, uh, did a good thing there. Um, I guess it was a, a good day out of school for the Winnemac Warriors as they uh, went up to uh, Chesapeake Run there. Yeah, that was us, yeah, that was last Friday. So yeah. now, Pine, you know, when they've had basically a week and a half to get, to get well, I think they had one. Uh, they had a match earlier this week, but again, a lot of time to prepare for that sectional. Which should be very tough coming up at Twin Lakes the other uh, coming up on Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, Logansport has been moved to the Twin Lakes sectional okay. for this year, so they. You'd have to imagine that Logansport will be a contender. Um, Winnemac will be a contender. The team that people always seem to forget about but always seems to play good golf is North Newton. Really? Yeah, they're solid. North Newton. And then, uh, you know, Twin Lakes having, I think, a little bit of a down year this year. But tw Twin Lakes a traditional power in girls' golf. You think North Newton would probably be more of a, a Lynx style of team being out there in the prairie where they're at. <laughs> probably don't have a lot of trees on their courses. <laughs> But uh, if you haven't ever been out there, it really opens up. You, mm -hmm. you wouldn't think there was a prairie in Indiana, but there sure is. So, um, yeah, so Twin Lakes. So what am I thinking as far as Logan? That must have been boys have a sectional at Logan. Right. Logansport hosts their boys sectional at Dyke The Park girls' the sectional, spring. though, is at Twin Lakes. Yeah. Okay. This year. This year. They used to travel down to uh, Western, but now they're going to Twin Lakes. To Twin Lakes. Okay. So uh, Logan, Pioneer, Winnemac, uh, all those will be there. Culver uh, will be... Culver goes to the Laporte section. That's coming up on Friday. Okay. So that uh, they right. have a and few the... short... Uh, they don't have a complete team either, do they? Uh, it depends on which day. They, they, have, they just, have had just enough. They have, they, have, they have had the numbers at times. I don't know. Okay. If Coach Jacobson hasn't said it. They'll have enough going forward at Laporte. Obviously, they'll... they'll Culver Girls Academy, Lady mm -hmm. Eagles are going to be the favorites there. Sure. And they are in the top 20 statewide. Yeah. In their statewide rankings. Well, I mean, when you got your own nine-hole course to practice on, that doesn't hurt. Yeah. So. All right. Anything else? Well, yeah, I think that's about it. Just, uh, it's been a crazy week. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll see what happens tonight. Uh, you know, as we said on schedule as of right now when we're filming you know culver is going to be hosting triton uh, pioneer is supposed to host hammond central and uh Caston is uh due to uh to host laville um Tippecanoe valley going to be going over to um north judson and uh is that it rochester is not playing and winnemac is not playing so that's what we've got as of right now. Could, yeah, could change. We're we're filming on Thursday. Could change between now and then. But uh, stay safe. Uh, hopefully, you know this will all kind of work its way out. I'm I'm still very nervous as to where we're going to end up as we move into you mm -hmm. know indoor sports. You know, we saw this kind of last year. It kind of went up and then kind of went down, and then when we went in the inside, then it kind of went up again. And I know Rochester is already limiting uh, the number of fans for their inside uh, mm -hmm. sports. Basically, volleyball is all they're doing right now inside. So I think that it's four, right, tickets per player? I think so, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, there's there's some limitations starting to happen a little bit, but, uh, you know, hopefully we can get past it and have a normal uh, end to the season because you know, we've got a lot of teams that are looking to make some noise when it comes sectional time. Yeah. Oh, by the way... Purdue plays Notre Dame on Saturday, which means Jack Kaiser will be going up against the alma mater of basically his entire family. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. His girlfriend even goes to Purdue. Uh -huh. And, uh, yeah, I mean, his, his family is traditional, you know, Boilermakers. And there for a long time we thought he would probably end up there. But, uh, you know, Notre Dame came calling. And I guess when you when you get that bell, you know, you, you, you take it and go. Mm -hmm. and, and he did. And this might be a good game. First time since what 2014 that they've played. Uh, you know they had one of the longest standing rivalries in college football before that, and haven't played in in seven years. And it might be a really good game. You know Purdue's looking good, Notre Dame's looking good, but uh, Notre Dame's defense is a little shaky at times. So, 
David Bell. He is for real. Mm -hmm. So that'll be interesting to see how that comes out. It's at Notre Dame, so that's the only game I ever went to at Notre Dame Stadium was uh, against Purdue. Uh, mm -hmm. Might have been that 2014 game or 2013. I don't remember when the last where the last one was, but yeah. so. By the way, Penn is 0 and 4. I saw that. Yeah, that's uncharted waters for them, isn't it? But they, uh, you know, they play some schools. Yeah. <laughs> so, are they still in the top ten? No. <laughs> They're not. Okay. Yeah. Unlike Big the, game in the Doolin Conference with Valpo and Chesterton this week. Both of those teams are 4-0. Yeah. You saw that Chesterton quarterback, Chris Mullen, play against Pioneer mm -hmm. last Senior year. this year? Yeah, senior this year. I've, I've been keeping an eye on him. I was yeah. really, really impressed by him last year. Any idea if he'll be going somewhere big? Haven't heard, but Haven't heard. Uh, he was, division, he's going to go somewhere in Division One. I, yeah, I would he imagine. Yeah, quality. Yeah, for sure. Size. He had the size and the everything. size, and he just he just gl glided out there. I mm -hmm. mean, a lot of all the guys just seemed like they were just chugging as hard as they could, and he just seemed to glide. Yeah, out there just really yeah. moved well. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll wrap things up here for tonight. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next week with uh, another episode of Talking Sports with Val. See you, everybody. Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! Yeah. <laughs>Bank closing? Are you unhappy with your current bank or financial institution? At First Federal Savings Bank, we've been serving your community for 55 years. And whether you're in need of a home loan, commercial loan, checking account, financial services, or insurance services, we'll be here for you tomorrow. Make the switch today. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best.